Okay, let's see here. Okay, I'll just I'll just keep letting people in as they come. Yeah, okay, take your time. You can, whenever uh, you're ready, let me, let me know. You can you can start whenever, and I'll just kind of watch the the waiting room and let them in if oh. they. Okay, did you let in everybody who was waiting already? Yes, yes. So we are we're we're ready to go now, and if people come and join late, I'll just let them in. Okay, okay, that sounds good. All right, uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, during pandemic, obviously, you are not swimming for the most part, unless you have access to private pool or so in your house. And uh, my name is Gennady Sokolovas. Everybody calls me Dr. G. I worked with USA Swimming as Director of Sports Science and Physiology for almost 10 years. Uh, now I'm working at Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And also have my own company, which doing research in swimming, testing swimmers all over the world. Uh, working closely with uh, FINA. I'm one of the FINA experts, which are running coaches education, international coaches education. So we are running a lot of presentations in US, ar around the world, in different countries. And I apologize, I have to wear my sunglasses tonight because I had eye surgery recently. So doctors advise me sunglasses all the time until they'll let me know <laughs> for the next few days at least. So anyway, today, uh, We'll cover uh, warm up and cool down. Uh, that uh, I was studying a lot when I was working for USA Swimming. We created a huge database for that, especially for the cool down protocols. Uh, worked with Michael Fels, as you see here on the picture, uh, for many years since I moved to the United States back in early 2000, more than 20 years ago. So I started to work with Mo uh, Michael and his coach Bob and many other elite level swimmers uh, on the national team. Basically, we already tested 120 Olympic champions, mostly in swimming, but also in a few other sports as well. Uh, especially when I'm working at Olympic Training Center now, I'm working with uh, multiple sports, not, uh, not only with swimmers. And we continue testing a lot, uh, develop many testing protocols, including so-called swim power tests, which, is record, records, which records uh, swim speed in real time. Uh, 60 times per second, so we can overlay on the video and see what your weaknesses are in the stroke. That's a huge topic as well that we developed all, over the last 12 years or so. Uh, anyway, so you can uh, watch some services and videos of our research on our website, which is on the screen. I'll send this presentation to Coach Emily so she can share with you as well. Uh, so there, is, there are no secrets. We are happy to share and do free presentations for many clubs in the US, uh, especially now during the quarantine. So let's start with the warm up and cool down presentation. So warm up uh, before competition, obviously it's important for every event, you're swimming 50 or 50 a mile or even 10K race outdoor, you have to prepare your body for the greater effort in order to avoid muscle uh, injury or joint injury may happen, so there are various reasons. Plus, you'll be better prepared for the uh, for the race effort if you are doing warm up, especially if you're doing proper warm up. Uh, so most of swimmers and coaches choose the warm up intensity duration based on somebody's advice, mostly coaches' advice, based on your own experience, okay, or intuitively just you feel okay, that's enough, I'm ready to race, but it's also important scientifically and physiologically understand what uh, benefits are of the warm-up and how to do best warm-up. There are a lot of studies done on the warm-up. So there, uh, benefits are such as rehearsal effect. Okay? You have to rehearse swimming technique, tempo you're swimming, uh, your starts, turns, intensity. Uh, make sure you're familiar with the pool, with the walls, uh, diving block uh, before the race. Uh, other benefits are that you will increase joints and muscle flexibility, and as a result, you will improve stroke efficiency. You can swim longer distance per stroke, which is better. We know that uh, 
the best swimmers swimming the longest distance per stroke. If you look at even at sprinters like Caleb Dressel or Nathan Adrian or other sprinters, they're swimming very long distance per stroke. They're doing fewest number of strokes per lap in comparison with other athletes. They're always like a top the first, second, third place athletes who are finishing the race, they're swimming fewest number of strokes. So you can count yourself uh, looking at the World Championships finals or Olympic Games uh, finals, you'll see what's the difference between those swimmers who are winning medals and those who are not winning medals. So that's why in practices you also need to focus a lot on the distance per stroke, which will help you to improve your efficiency of the stroke. Uh, after the warm up, muscles can contract faster and relax more completely, which also reduces the chance for injuries and your muscles will be working more efficiently as well, will not be wasting as much energy as during a uh, without warm. -up. Also, after the warm up, studies indicate that uh, efficiency, economy, sorry, of your physiological systems increasing up to 20, even sometimes 30%. Uh, normally, economy is measured as how much oxygen your body consumes at, at, the, at certain speed. And you can increase economy by reducing oxygen consumption, which is, means your body works more efficiently. It doesn't mean that you're swimming 20, 30% faster, but you are more efficient, more economical, your body works economically. So uh, result of the warm up also is increased body temperature, okay? Your heart rate, uh, as well as heart rate, closer to the competition state. You will increase your blood circulation as a result of increased heart rate, uh, which will help to deliver more oxygen and glucose to the muscles. And also, a metabolic products such as lactic acid and many others will be removed uh, after the warm up faster. Your body will be ready to remove during the race, even. So that's why you'll be less tired at the beginning of the race and you'll be longer time sustaining higher speed if you do a good warm up. So there are two uh, phases of the warm up, uh, or two types, maybe, maybe two phases, uh, which is general and specific. Okay. General normally relates to the drought phase where you're preparing body for the specific warm up. Specific warm up is, uh, includes swimming prior to the race. General warm up usually has stretch, includes stretching and flexibility exercises, and specific has swimming exercises in the warm up. So we'll go through different uh, phases with you together. So let's review first uh, general warm up. Uh, that's as I told, includes stretching and flexibility exercises for most important joints, such as shoulders, your lower back, knees, ankles, and usually should take at least 15 minutes, sometimes even longer than that. Depends how much you're used to that. You may do a little bit slower intensity or slightly higher intensity exercises. Stretching exercises improve, improve your flexibility and also improve blood circulation as well. There are static and, uh, and dynamic stretching exercises, which are better, depends what you want to do. Static stretching exercises improve your flexibility better. Dynamic stretching exercises improve power performance as well. So what's the difference between static and dynamic? On board static, you probably can imagine that you're stretching your muscles or the joints and you're holding for a few seconds in that position. That's a static stretch, okay? Dynamic stretch when you're not holding, but you're just moving your arms constantly. You're stretching, relaxing again, stretching, relaxing. That's a dynamic type of exercise for the stretching. So therefore, before the competition, in order not to lose the power, probably it's better to do dynamic stretch exercise. However, in practices, if your goal is to improve or maintain flexibility, you can use static stretch exercises or both at the same time. Probably preferably you would start with static stretch exercises or practices and then finish with dynamic stretches. If it's before race, do just dynamic stretch exercise. That's better, you will not lose power. So, and also it's important how long you're stretching. Every joint should be stretched at least 90 seconds. You're stretching less than that, Normally, you are not uh, stretching uh, full in enough. You have to stretch a little bit more than, uh, than that. 
So that's why it's pretty long time, one and a half minute, one, one uh, joint to stretch. However, you can do combination. You can do three, four joints, stretching one, one round for 30 seconds and do three rounds, four rounds like this. Then total time will be already 90 seconds. So you can be creative in that as well. Specific warm up uh, increases your working capacity prior to the race. Duration of specific warm up normally should be between 40 and 60 minutes. Uh, however, it depends on your individual experience, depends on the event that you're racing. Some swimmers like to do double warm up, especially uh, sometimes you are forced to do that if you have competition pool and warm up pool at the, at the competition. In this case, you need to, to swim at the competition to pull obviously because you want to be familiar with the pool as a first part of the warm-up. And then you may take a little bit break and do your uh, 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 second part of the warm-up in a uh, warm-up pool. So since this uh, sprinters are racing uh, more intensively, uh, they should be theoretically, at least theoretically, should be done longer warm-up as well. Because sprinters may have more potentially injuries, they exert, have high exertion level than distance swimmer per, per second if you look at their time. Uh, so, and also sprinters are not recovering as well. I'll show you some studies a little bit later that we did. As there is, uh, that shows that sprinters need to recover a little bit longer after the warm up. Uh, so therefore, theoretically, a sprinter should do longer warm up than distance swimmer. Obviously not always that happens, but at least sprinters should do 40 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer warm up. Uh, you, you cannot shorten the, that. Uh, so, moderate effort uh, encourages blood circulation and uh, heat uh, increase in the body, of the body, this heat circulation in the body as well. Uh, and uh, some uh, in uh, swimming, I mean, warm up also requires mimicking race pace and race technique certain tempo, distance per stroke that you're swimming, swimming. That's why it takes also to accumulate some metabolic products and lactates during the warm-up as well. And it takes also a little bit time to cool down after the warm-up, really short cool down. And we'll review how long that should last. Stages of specific warm-up. Easy swimming first can be done between 10 and 20 minutes. Uh, easy swimming can be done full body swim, cooling only. Preferably keeping cobalt between ankles if you are using cobalt. Some uh, events, uh, some competitions, you're not allowed to pull at all. Uh, using cobalt between ankles, I'm always advising to swimmers because it improves your technique as well. You're never using a polypic shanks and cobalt between ties because then your body is too relaxed. You have to be tight in the body in order to create less drag. Uh, that's one, uh, that's the research that we are doing on swimming technique. And, and that's why always keeping pulbo between ankles is better if you're using pulbo, even during the practices. So then uh, you need to do also kicking probably if you are used to that. However, again, no board. And at some, in most pools uh, during the warm up, you are not allowed to board, which is great as well for your swimming technique. And also swim stroke drills uh, should be also included. What drills? It depends what you want to improve. There are so many variety of different drills and we're developing hundreds of drills now to fix different mistakes that we see in swimming technique based on our swim power research. Uh, so then second stage of the warm up include repeats of different distances at race pace. In order to be, uh, get the feeling of the race pace, what you need to swim, uh, what times per 50 or per 25 you need to hit, and uh, that will warm up your physiological systems better. Usually sprinters should repeat, do repeats, uh, shorter distances with longer S interval, intervals, and distance swimmers, longer distances with shorter S intervals. After that, you should go do start and turns. It's recommended to do at the competition pool, so you want to check the wall, you want to check how it looks like underwater, uh, you want to check uh, how high gutter, gutters are. So all this stuff needs to be known, uh, you have to know before, before the race. So why competition pool and make sure you're doing in your lane uh, uh, as well, you're swimming. So backstrokers also should count number of strokes uh, uh, 
uh, from overhead flex to the churn. So you are comfortable with that. And at the end, you should swim five to 10 minutes easy. And uh, that helps to recover after mimicking race pace and after uh, dives and churns. It's like a short cool down at the end. So specific warm up should be uh, fi should fi should finish uh, uh, around 15 to 20 minutes before the race. So why 15 to 20 minutes? Because normally after 20 minutes you are losing physiological effort. Temperature, body temperature going down, uh, blood circulation decreases, and many other factors happen. However, it's not always possible to finish 20 minutes before the race. Whenever I'm working with swimmers at the World Championships, Olympic Games, I can see that it's out almost impossible there are so many protocols waiting room going uh, uh, from waiting room to the uh, start introduction and other stuff so in this case we're developing protocols what swimmers need to do to maintain body temperature and to maintain blood circulation with if that's more than 20 minutes obviously they need to rest warm and do some dynamic stretching exercise the worst case would be probably if you would stretch static exercises at that time you would lose some power that's why dynamic stretching is, is better, as we already discussed. So that's why there is always a way to maintain body temperature uh, and also maintain blood circulation higher, uh, even if you have more than 20 minutes bef bef uh, between finishing warm up and the race. And if you're maintaining right body temperature, uh, right blood circulation, it's easier to settle into the race and you'll be swimming longer without fatigue, without accumulating metabolic products, lactic acid, inorganic phosphate, hydrogen ions, and many, many others. Let's review some examples of specific, uh, for the specific warm-up for sprinters. Actually, it's total warm-up, okay. general and specific, as you can see. So the first uh, would, be, would include general warm-up, Stretching about 10 15 minutes, you may do it even longer. Uh, different joints, your muscles again, try to do dynamic stretching. Uh, then you start specific warm up, which includes 400 swimming easy, feel the water, probably longer distance per stroke, a little bit. So that helps. I'm sorry. off my cell phone. Uh, so 400 easy, longer distance per stroke. Then 600 stroke, pull, kick, drills, uh, as we already discussed. After that, you go uh, six, uh, mimicking race pace. Sprinters will be probably better shorter, 625s or 250s, uncomfortable race interval, trying to do race pace. If you are more preparing for the 50 race, probably would be better 25s to swim. If you 100 race, maybe better 50s or combination of 25s and 50s. Uh, so then uh, uh, 400 stroke drills, again mimicking race pace, shorter one, two, 225s if you are 50 meter sprinter or 425s if you are 100 sprinter uh, on comfortable race interval. 200 easy recovery after mimicking race pace, then three, four turns, uh, two, three starts, uh, again, recovery 200, and you're ready to go. That's total more than 2,000. So it will be about 40 minutes plus, probably, for you to swim uh, without rush uh, the warm-up. And try to plan again that you're finishing warm-up 20 minutes before the race. Uh, warm-up for distance swimmer. Again, stretching the land can be, should be very similar. Uh, then 600 easy, longer distance per stroke, 400 stroke pull, kick, drills, uh, mimicking race pace. If you're a miler or so, or even 800 swimming, probably hundreds would be good. If you are swimming 500s, you may mix between 50s and 100s. On comfortable race, uh, race interval, however, a little bit shorter. You don't want to swim too long rest, you have too long rest interval since you are distance swimmer. Uh, so then 200 stroke drills, again, mimic race pace on over shorter distance, such as 50s, uh, 200 easy, three, four turns, one or two dives, a little bit less dives, then sprinter, 
it is not as much important as a sprinter. And 400 easy recovery. Uh, although recovery for distance swimmers, as I told, happens faster, you're clearing lactate faster, uh, you are replenishing glycogen faster in the muscles. However, that swim, uh, distance swimmers like to swim more. And that's why normally they feel more comfortable swimming 400, but if you are too tired, you may keep 200 swimming easy. That's also fine. So in total, about 2,500, that would be total uh, uh, distance that you should cover for, for the warm-up. All right, what you should do in terms of supplementation or snacks or eating uh, during and after the warm-up. So some supplementation is important part of recovery. And it should begin during the warm-up. You should start replenishing uh, muscles glycogen uh, right after the warm-up or even during the warm-up. Because if you're swimming, mimicking race space during the warm-up, you are losing some glycogen from the muscle. And you want to replenish that. You want to be fully ready, fully, fully loaded with glycogen in the muscles for your race. So that's why you should start replenishing. Okay? Some supplementation will help to maintain high glycogen in the blood at the end of the, of the warm-up. And also, some glycogen will be replenished in the muscles. Uh, since you guys are age group swimmers, so you are younger, your metabolism is at higher rate uh, than adults. So that's why you will be losing glycogen faster than older swimmers. As a result, you need to supplement yourself even more frequently. That's why you need to have some supplements uh, and some bars and drinks and other stuff. We'll, I'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, uh, what, uh, uh, so what kind of supplement supplementation needs to be done before that? Because so there is a time, at least 20 minutes, maybe even longer, after you finish your warm-up and your race. Okay? Normally, you should not eat a lot, just very little. Some energy bar, maybe fruits. Maybe half a bar only, depending on your stomach. Some swimmers just too nervous, they cannot eat too much. Uh, so, but you still need to eat a little bit. Just start recovering glyc of glycogen in, in your muscles. Uh, you should also keep your body hydrated, mostly water. Not mostly, but only water before the race. There are no energy drinks that you need uh, uh, before the race, it's just the water. So. Uh, why energy drinks are not good before the race? Because energy drinks are very easy uh, to deliver, deliver glucose, primarily sugar, in your blood. It will take just one minute, probably even less than that. You're drinking, it's already in the blood. And what happens? You, your glyc uh, glucose is elevated in the blood. As a result, you are, uh, your body will try to limit elevation of glucose by releasing insulin. It's like body hormone. And that will store uh, glucose from blood in different body uh, part tissues, which is good at storing. However, insulin doesn't stop right away when it's reaching the limit. Okay, now I stop. No, it's just the process. It takes even low, less, uh, removes even more glucose from your blood than necessarily. You might be feeling sluggish going on the diving block. Already. So that's why better keep just water. So after the race, so you can, you can drink energy drinks. We'll, we'll talk that, about that a little bit later. All right, so very popular is caffeine, especially for elite level swimmers. If you've been at the national championships or other places, uh, I mean, other events, big events, on the trials. Uh, so you, will, you would see that swimmers are a lot drinking ca caffeine. Why caffeine is so good, important? Because caffeine provides some energy. It mobile stim stimulates the nervous system, especially good for sprinters. I don't think it's good for distance swimmers, but it helps for sprinters to uh, stimulate nervous system. Muscles contraction becomes a little bit faster. Not everybody likes it, uh, but uh, in general, studies indicate that it may also enhance your cardiovascular system and fuel utilization. So it releases also calcium for muscles contraction. That's why there are some benefits and studies indicate that drinking caffeine is good for your result. And uh, it's not prohibited. You can drink coffee, as much coffee as you want before the rest. So, uh, 
Obviously, I would not suggest to do that right at the competition. This competition is still important. That's why you should try in practices how that works for you. Yeah, like you have some time trial with the coach or some high intensity set, you can try caffeine, maybe one cup or two cups. And then uh, initially, if you're never uh, drinking caffeine, probably it's one cup would be plenty for you. But normally, as it's adapting, we, buy, uh, we are biological body that adapts to everything. That's why we need probably at some point a little bit more than one cup, maybe two cups. Elite level swimmers drinking two, three cups. I know some of them, like Natalie Cargan, Olympic champion, who was drinking five, six cups before the race. So that's a lot of caffeine. But she was drinking that already for many years and adapted to that. I remember 2008 at the Olympic Games when she won gold, second, so second gold medal over 100. She was almost shaking before the race. I told Natalie, what's going on with you? She told, oh, Dr. G, it's many, too much caffeine. <laughs> but that helped. She swam really fast and won gold medal. So uh, let's go a little bit what happens after the race, what you need to recover, and how to recover. So first, obviously, it will, you will be tired, but two types of fatigue. One fatigue is after heart, uh, heart, uh, uh, heart race. What is heart race? When you're swimming in oxygen deficit environment, races like a 100, even 50, 100, 200, 400, 500 races. That's where you will have highest peaks of lactates. And I'll show you the peak to lactates. Uh, you'll understand that a little bit uh, later. So after this type of swimming, one to three minutes duration, and sometimes a little bit longer, you're accumulating, accumulating a lot of metabolic products, lactic acid, inorganic phosphate, hydrogen ion, and uh, probably close to 100 different metabolic products. We just know mostly about lactate because it's, it's, most, it's, it's mostly studied metabolite, but there are a lot of other metabolic products as well. All these metabolic products create acid environment in the muscles. And, uh, uh, and that's why muscles can be also breaking down faster. And you are uh, acid environment in also creates an uh, uh, environment where contraction, uh, I mean, not only muscles contraction, but all chemical reactions are much slower. As a result, muscles contracting slower, not as, as high power. That's why the more you're accumulating lactic acid and other metabolic products, the slower contraction is. And as a result, you are swimming slower. Okay? So then you need some time to recover. And we'll discuss that what needs to be done uh, for the recovery. Second uh, type of recovery is after aerobic work. For example, you're milder and you're not accumulating as much lactic acid, especially if also when you're a younger athlete, you are accumulating less uh, uh, metabolic products as well. It's mostly aerobically you're swimming. And as a result, after swimming 20 minutes or so, sometimes even shorter, 15 minutes, uh, so you, are, you will be still tired. But this is different type of fatigue. This fatigue is because of reduced energy sources. Your swimming efficiency will be not as good. Muscle contraction will be also not as powerful because there, is, there are no, not enough glycogen in the muscles. And as a result, you will be swimming slower as well. So we don't know about lactate. What averages are lactate after various races? These are numbers for elite level swimmers. Uh, so primarily uh, uh, seniors in high school probably and collegiate athletes, that's our national team swimmers, after different events. Let's say if you're racing 50, elite level swimmers reaching on average 7.2 millimoles per liter of lactate. Raising 100, 12.3, 200, 11.4, 400, 10.3, 1500, 7.3, and 10K is 3.6. Those are averages. Obviously, everybody is slightly different. The younger you are, the more aerobically you are fit, lower peak lactates are. Uh, and the older you are, the higher peak lactates. Just to give you an example, Michael Phelps, when he broke world record uh, in uh, of in uh, over 100 butterfly in 2003 at World Championship in Barcelona, tested his lactate right away. It was only 5.3 lactate. That's pure aerobic swim, not pure, a little bit above aerobic threshold. That shows how aerobically he was fit at that time. That's secured his long career in swimming. And he was also recovering really well at that time because of lower peak lactates. Yeah, and that's aerobic condition. 
However, and he was already 20, in 2015, 2016 season, he was building 12, 13, even 14 millimoles per liter. So he became more powerful, muscular mass increased, and he became more aerobic. He probably didn't swim as high volumes at that time. So therefore, in your career, it changes. The older you are, the higher peak lactates are. And that's physiologically also because your body uh, has more anaerobic enzymes, releases more anaerobic enzymes uh, during anaerobic work. Uh, and uh, when you're older, and as a result, you have higher peak lactates as well. But now if you are younger, uh, so you will probably have slightly lower peak lactates than are here in, in, in this table. So, uh, so if you look at the highest peak lactates are after 100 and 200 events, okay? Look 50, looks like it's very short distance, just 25 seconds or so, it's even faster. And uh, so, but it's still about 65% from the maximum, which means that anaerobic system is in, involved around 65% from your maximum involvement in 100. So that uh, was actually an uh, interesting discovery for us when we started the studies. And uh, so that shows that sprinters, it, even 50, they, they cannot train just creatine phosphate, like a short distance training. They need to build good anaerobic capacity as well. So therefore, they need to swim 50s in practices and 100s in practices probably. And probably it's better to go from longer end. Because if you look like a top, all the top sprinters in the world right now, uh, 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 look at Caleb Dressel, look at um, Nathan Adrian, look at many other swimmers, uh, sprinters. I'm pretty good familiar with their training. And Caleb Dressel is swimming 60, 65 kilometers per week right now. Uh, right now. Not right now, sorry, but in quarantine, but in the middle of the season. So, and he can swim 200 butterfly race, I think in 2017, before the world championship 2017, 200 butterfly long course, he did 155. How many sprinters can swim 200 butterfly 155 with just sprinting short distances? Nobody. That's why he's so good. That's why he can race so many events back to back there's no problem same was for michael Phelps because he had great aerobic condition that's why at your age it's very important to develop good aerobic conditioning before switching to anaerobic specific work even if you are a sprinter so let's look at the lactate and fatigue how that relates okay if you're swimming multiple races or in practices you have intensity intensive practices multiple high intensity sets and practices you're using glycogen for energy. Glycogen is part of glucose that's stored in the muscles. Okay? And eventually, you'll be tired after multiple races because you'll be lower, lower glycogen in the muscles. And as a result, you will not be building so much lactic acid as well. That's what we found by testing swimmers, elite level swimmers in practices. At the beginning of the practice, after warm up, they have the highest peak lactic. They swim really fast and then swim a little bit slower. Uh, not too much slow, but still slightly slower. And uh, we found that at the end of the practice, athletes had been able to build only 60, 70% from their maximum peak lactate, even with high intensity sets. Uh, so that le led us to the idea that probably need to do something about that. Can we replenish glycogen at least partially during the practice? And I'll explain you about this study a little bit later. So, and uh, since peak lactates are, have direct correlation with the glycogen, that's a source, lactate source for, uh, for lactate source is a glycogen in the muscles. So that shows that athletes are losing glycogen after multiple races or after multiple sets in practices. So therefore, we need to replenish that, especially if you are racing at the competition as well. So you, in multiple races, you're finishing one race, you have another race in an hour or so, so you have to start re replenishing your energy sources. Okay? So that you can do by doing passive recovery, okay. especially if you, uh, if you want, don't have cool down, uh, warm up pool, one pool only, that's very hard to do active recovery at that time. Or you can do active recovery, which you can do swimming cool down, or if there is no pool, you still can in elevate your blood circulation by doing some stretching, maybe jogging a little bit, because why we need uh, active recovery? Uh, why active recovery is better? Because it increases blood circulation. We can find ways to increase the blood circulation in different ways, not only cool down swim 
cooldown will be, would be great, but if there is no pool, don't worry. You can do that other way as well. So examples of passive recovery, okay? Sitting on a bench, on deck, talking to friends, uh, listening to music, watching the races, that's your passive recovery. That's if you're racing, then you're sitting and watching the race, okay? That's probably not the best recovery, even if you are not racing that day. You're racing the next day, it will affect your results next day as well. So active recovery, you're doing cool down. You're doing dynamic stretching as well, especially if you have neck stretch, not static stretching, but dynamic stretching. Do jogging, okay? You can even use some ice or cold pad, bad cap uh, to reduce muscle pain and swollenness. Uh, but that should be done after the active recovery, not substituting that. Ice or cold pad, as you imagine, decrease the blood circulation. It's not increasing. Of course, you need to increase blood circulation. Then you need to reduce muscle pain or swollenness with ice or cold pad. That's why active recovery has to be first. So these are examples of lactate clearance for the same swimmer uh, racing 200 on different days. Peak lactate was very similar, but when swimmer did active recovery in about 20 minutes, he reached close to 2 millimoles per liter, which is normally we consider enough for the cool down. Okay? But when he did passive recovery the next day, it took almost two hours to reach one, uh, 2 millimoles. That's a passive recovery. Recovery. So where do you want to be for your next race? Your next race in 60 minutes or so, you're doing passive, you have about, this swimmer will have still about six millimoles per liter of lactate, more than threshold in the blood. What means higher peak lactate in the blood? That means that uh, uh, body cannot uh, have fast chemical reactions to replenish glycogen. That means also that your muscles will be contracting slower. So there are a lot of physiological effects from higher peak lactate. You can, uh, uh, you should also probably understand that it's on, not only lactate. Some studies indicate if that would be just lactate, muscles would contract probably still pretty good. But there are many other metabolic problems. It's not only lactate that affecting muscles contraction. We cannot separate our in our metabolic um, reactions lactate from other, other uh, metabolic problems. They, all of them coming together as part of aero, and so called met, uh, anaerobic metabolism. So, what effects of active recovery? You obviously increase in blood circulation if you're doing active recovery. More oxygen is delivered. Okay? Uh, transition of lactate from muscles to the blood is faster because that's where lactate is used in the muscles. Then, uh, faster lactate clearance from blood to other body tissues faster replenishment of energy sources in the muscles. Although some, uh, some studies indicate that if you're waiting for a few minutes, five minutes before you jump cool down, it may work even better. I'm okay with that. And I think that should be also taken uh, into consideration so we can keep a little bit uh, lactate inside the muscles. It converts, some of lactate converts back to the glycogen and then we start cool down to remove the rest of metabolic products. But without swimming at all, I don't think it's, it's working well. And in fact, our studies indicate that it doesn't work well. Increased muscle contraction ability also after active recovery, even you have 10 minutes. Remember with Michael Phelps, sometimes he had 10 minutes before, before, before races. He was asking Dr. G what I should do. Okay. Michael, just, just swim five minutes and go to the next race. Okay. You will be still recovering better. Uh, and you also may consider to swim in your racing suit pool now. It's at least the first half of the cool down. Why racing suit is better? Because you're keeping compression of the muscles and we know that muscles compression is good because it keeps blood circulating inside the muscles more. It doesn't come to the skin. Skin doesn't have too much muscles. And we're not using this muscle during the race. We're using larger muscles that we wanna keep blood circulating and replenishing glycogen more and deliver oxygen. So that's why it's good to swim in race suit during the cool down. So, and then you will be able to race again at your maximum effort with, within shorter time. Uh, it also a lot depends on your, how much lactate you accumulated, what your in general conditioning is. If your aerobic conditioning, you're recovering faster. That's why distance swimmers always recover faster than sprinters. Passive recovery is always everything opposite. If you're not doing any, any uh, active recovery, 
your blood circulation slow, oxygen delivery slow, lactate transition from muscles to the blood slow, lactate clearance slow, energy sources in the muscle slow, and you have decreased muscle contraction ability for the, for the next race, especially you have, if you have a race the same session. So what should be the duration of the pull down? Okay. Uh, so based on our studies, uh, uh, so the, uh, the shorter distance you swim, the more anaerobic metabolism happens, the more metabolic products you're accumulating in the muscles, the longer pull down time should be. Except one, no, except 50. 50, as you saw, based on the peak lactate case, uh, lower, if, uh, shorter event, you're not accumulating as much metabolic products. But after 100 for sprinters, they need to swim 25 to 30 minutes. And those norms, these norms are for adults. That's why you, as younger athletes, you should swim five, uh, five, maybe even seven, eight minutes shorter than these norms are. Okay? Because normally you're coming faster. Uh, then middle distance swimmers, after 200, 400, 500 events, they should swim 20, 25 minutes, adults again. Okay. And distance swimmers after 800 or one mile events should swim 15 to 20 minutes cooler. Also important to know what intensity you should swim. Because depending on intensity, you may start accumulating metabolic products, lactic acid and others during the cool down or you can recover. Maybe you're too slow and you are not increasing blood circulation. Ideal intensity should be under individual lactic pressure. Since you don't know your threshold, however, we did some studies and we found that when you're swimming heart rate, sprinters keeping heart rate under 70% from maximum, 65 to 70, then that's around, uh, that's below anaerobic threshold. And you can clear lactate at pretty good. That's a relatively easy pace, okay? 60 to 70% of your heart, maximum heart rate. Uh, then middle distance swimmers should maintain a little bit higher heart rate because their threshold is slightly higher. They're better aerobically fit athletes. That's why they can swim slightly higher heart rate, 70 to 75%. And distance swimmers should swim at moderate pace, 75 to 80% from the heart rate, maximum heart rate. That helps them to clear lactate also faster because even with the higher heart rate in relative to individual norms, individual maximum, uh, they will be able to clean, I mean, to clear, to, uh, to, yes, to clear lactic acid and other metabolic products faster. So uh, duration of cool down in swimming, what it should be, that's again, this are norms for elite level swimmers, adults. You should do again five, seven minutes, probably short, maybe even eight minutes short, cool down. Uh, you can do a little bit more, but I would not advise to do more especially if you're preparing for the next race, you should save your time, rest, eat a little bit, and rebuild your glycogen in the muscles instead of swimming too long cool down. So if you are this uh, table for distance swimmers and sprinters, middle distance swimmers will be somewhere between those numbers. Okay? So if you're a distance swimmer and racing, let's say 100 or 200, the maximum lactate events, uh, maximum lactate distances, so you should swim 15 to 20 minutes if you are down. For you younger guys, I would su suggest to swim probably between 10 and 12 minutes, somewhat in this range. So uh, if you are sprinter swimming the same distance 100, you'll be recovering slower. Elite level swimmers would be 25 to 30 minutes recovery to clear lactic acid down to two millimoles per liter as we are looking. And uh, so that's if you're 25, 30 minutes recovery, then for elite level swimmers, you guys should probably swim uh, about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Probably would be enough for you to swim. So uh, it depends on your age as well. The younger you are, the faster you recover. Ideally, you should be tested and you know, obviously it's a bit more complicated. Not every club has lactate meters, although it becomes more and more popular. I remember when I moved to the United States, more than 20 years ago, everybody was afraid of lactate testing. And I suggested to test lactate and the swim meets everybody. No, 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 this is blood. You don't understand the United States. You know, that's, now everybody testing, no problem, even with the blood. So let's uh, look one of study that we did, very interesting study we did uh, with elite swimmers, distance swimmers in this case. Uh, 
is we wanted to know how much glycogen uh, atoms have in the blood and in the muscles and lactate as well when they swimming. And K race. Or that's probably would be like a long practice, like good aerobic practice also for uh, not only distance swimmers, but middle distance swimmers, and sometimes even sprinters swimming 10K practices. Uh, so, and what we did, we asked athletes to stop every 2.5K uh, at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, and we tested their glucose and lactate after every 2.5K. So, after first 2.5K, which was about 30 minutes, a little bit shorter than 30 minutes for elite level swimmers, uh, time, so uh, they stopped. It's very short, we just stopped for 30 seconds or so, we don't need more than that. Uh, we took the small, small blood sample uh, and check glucose, check lactate, everything is normal. Glucose is pretty high, like a normal levels of glucose. And uh, same was, uh, well, the lactate was average level, it's not too high. So normal level of glucose shows us that in the blood, that shows us the body still can handle still has enough glycogen probably stored in different parts of the body, primarily in the muscles, but also in other parts of the body can be stored as well, such as liver, for example. So then uh, we stopped at this again after 5K. At that point, we noticed significant drop in muscle uh, glucose, in the glucose, in mu not muscle, but blood glucose, which is a reflection of the muscle's glycogen. And that show, tell, told us that most likely we needed already supplementation somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes okay, uh, for athletes. We've been swimming like a good pace, race pace, 10K race pace swimming, uh, which is good aerobic pace was. But significant drop of glucose indicated for us that athletes needed supplementation before. So then uh, lactate was also lower after 5K because the uh, uh, source for the lactate is glucose. And if it's lower, then we need it again, supplementation that shows. And uh, that study showed us that uh, we, uh, our swimmers should be supplemented every 30 to 45 minutes, elite level swimmers. Okay. How that translates to you guys, to younger swimmers. You're younger, you have higher metabolic rate. Your metabolism is faster. As a result, probably even after 30 minutes, you will be already losing glycogen after good quality working practices. What are the competitions? So you need to eat something bef even before. And you need to eat more frequently than elite level swimmers. So what you should eat during the practice or right after the race? You should eat high glycemic index carbohydrates. What means high glycemic index? That's glycemic, high glycemic index indicates how quickly body can digest uh, carbohydrates. The highest glycemic index is for energy drinks, for sugar. If you're drinking, it's immediately coming to your blood, okay? And start replenishing your glycogen, which is good right after the race, and which is good probably during the practice as well. So what kind of drinks there are? Is it called energy drinks? or chocolate milk. And uh, in fact, chocolate milk, a lot of studies indicate that's good. Some studies have been funded by chocolate milk, milk producers. You can tr not trust 100% those studies, uh, but still other studies indicate that chocolate milk is pretty good because it has good uh, amount of carbohydrates, also has a, a, a good amount of uh, proteins, which are also important to build muscle tissues. Uh, so, and uh, so that's why this drink is re relatively good. It helps, and also some fat, which is also important. So that's why uh, quite a few studies indicate that chocolate milk is probably one of the best drinks. If you don't like milk, obviously you should then use energy drinks, which will be fine as well. You can uh, eat also energy bars, especially those that are easy to digest. Okay? And that also has high glycemic index. Fruits, also have high glycemic index. And you need supplement probably with water as well uh, to keep body hydrated. Although energy drinks have some water as well, but they have a lot of sweets and you know, sugar, uh, which is okay right after the race or during the practice when you need something immediately to replenish glycogen. But 
before the race, as I already mentioned to you, it's not a good idea to drink energy drinks. Uh, nutrition after the race. Okay, it helps. It has to. Uh, it helps if you're eating, drinking right. It, uh, it helps to hydrate yourself. Fluids and electrolytes as well. Uh, some energy drinks have more electrolytes, some less, and you know the body is losing electrolytes uh, during high intensity work. Uh, so if you're eating right or drinking energy drinks or eating energy bars right after the race or during the practice or right after the practice. You have three times greater replenishment rate than two hours after that. Remember that. You have two hours, you're not eating anything, you will be definitely tired. The same day and next day probably will not be recovered as good as you would be. Three times higher rate of replenishment. So that's why you need to have always something in your bag, even during the practices. After the practices, during the regular day, you need to have some snacks and you'll eat multiple times a day because absorption rate also is better if you're eating multiple times instead of big portions three times a day. Uh, proteins will prevent from muscle tissue breakdown, which always happens happen when you physically exercise. So that's why proteins also are important. And uh, you may also consider to uh, avoid cell damage and inflammation, fruits, vegetables, fish, nuts, olive oil, vitamins, that's, that's important as well. We have separate presentation on nutrition. I will not go too much into the details about that. Uh, if you look at this slide, so you see that's how, what happens if you all have high carbohydrate nutrition, uh, I mean, high carbohydrate food recovery after the races or after practices and low carbohydrate nutrition. You can see clearly with low carbohydrate, Nutrition, we have more proteins, more fats, and other things, but not as, ma as many carbohydrates. You will be not replenishing glycogen as well in the muscles. And it goes lower every day, lower, lower, lower. Okay? Eventually, you will be depleted completely and you'll be so tired, you cannot exercise, you have to rest more, and you'll not be improving. But if your nutrition is good, if you will have high carbohydrate nutrition, so in this case, you'll be maintaining or even building more. There are methodologies to build even higher amount of carbohydrates in the muscles before your races. So uh, after the race, you should start nutrition right away. Don't need to wait. Same with the practices. Even after high intensity set in the middle of the practice, you have to eat something to be uh, to be better rested and high keep high intensity at second half of the set. Uh, you should take primarily carbohydrates at that time. That's what differentiates glycogen better in the muscles. Proteins also good, but it's, you don't need too much proteins during the practice or right after the race. You can take later. And later you should take proteins, a ratio between carbohydrates and proteins as four to one for distance swimmers and three to one for sprinters. Uh, sprinters, that's, that's normal uh, nutritional rules. Again, what examples are chocolate milk, that would be probably the first choice for many scientists. Uh, fluid, uh, different fluids, carbohydrates, fruits, yogurt, after the practices or after the races to start to recover energy bars. Uh, later on, you can take proteins as well. Sandwich, with, uh, chicken, or turkey sandwich, whatever you, you prefer. Uh, and don't forget water. You have to keep yourself hydrated well. There's not enough water, water in energy drinks or chocolate milk. And, uh, because of this sweet uh, taste, the body doesn't absorb also as well. That's why well. take in addition water. And let's review the stages of recovery after the race. Uh, first, high energy drinks and bars. Right after the race. You can even have in your back already when you're going on the diving line. You, know, you have to drink coming back depending on the distance that you need to walk. But then uh, swim cool down for 10 minutes, preferably in your race suit, because you want to keep muscles compression. Uh, eat high energy bars and fruits, drink energy drinks after 10 minutes cool down. And then finish your cool down, 10 minutes, or 20, or 15 minutes, or 20, oh, sorry, or five minutes, whatever you prefer, but every 10 minutes is better to eat something during the cool. And then once you finish your cool down, uh, make sure you're dressed warm. Don't lose your body temperature too much, too much, especially if you have another race that day. Eat snacks uh, after a race or workout. 
on the way to school, home, or hotel, depending if you are home training or you are going to the competition. So that's, these are stages that you need to go through and remember. And as I told, I'll send this presentation to you guys. Uh, so to Coach Emily, she can share with you and you can review that occasionally. When you cannot sleep at night, it's good to review some scientific studies when you sleep better. So anyway, I'm happy to answer questions if you have. I have a question. Yes. Um, so you went over, you know, like the difference of warm ups between um, sprinting or distance. So, you know, like with our kids at a lot of meets, they might have both. Um, is there a, a preference like they should choose? You know, let's say that they are, they're not specializing yet. So they, they don't have like a, I'm a 50 freestyle or not a 500 freestyler. Um, should they choose the longer one or, you know, for their, for their work, their, their, you know, specific warm up? That's a great question. Never heard this question before. So you are very smart. <laughs> yep. That's a good question. Uh, so my, in my opinion, you should do warm up for the first race. Okay. Then you may have some time for the second warm up if you do swim the second race. Uh, so, and, uh, but if you don't have even time for the warm up, let's say you are, distance swimmer, okay? And you are, let's say, swimming sprint event. Oh, forget about distance swimming. You're not specializing, and that's very good that you're not specializing at young age. Let's say you are swimming distance event, okay? Uh, the fir your first race. So you prepare as a distance, because you don't want, don't want to prepare for first event as sprinter. So then you still have a little bit of time. Even if you're not doing warm up, you can do something on land to mimic arm motion, you know, quickly do dynamic stretching, uh, do some uh, faster motion, maybe even stretch court a little bit on land. So you can find the way to do the, spr uh, the sprint a little bit more, okay? Uh, if you're doing sprint, let's say first event, shorter, let's say you're swimming 100, let's say sprint. I don't like 50, so, <laughs> but let's say 100. Uh, so in this case, uh, obviously your body will be ready, ready for the longer distance as well, swim. So you just swim already. Your body is really warmed up even more than necessarily after that event. That's why you just need probably recovery. You don't need too much swimming for, uh, for the longer event. And again, it depends on the time. If there is like a more than 20 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes, you have to keep your body temperature. You have to be dressed warm. Ideally, you should jump a little bit swimming. But if there is no opportunity to swim, that, that's also fine. You can find ways to do some uh, work on land. Okay, good question. Other ones? <laughs> they don't always ask questions. Um, don't but... be shy to ask questions. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to be challenged as well. I want to be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm learning myself. I'm trying to study them more and if, I'm not, if I don't have answer to your questions. <laughs> uh, any questions, guys? I have a question. Okay, perfect, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> So um, a lot of times when I warm up, I kind of find that like in my initial general warm up, uh, oftentimes like in the general warm up before um, the session, I find that like I'm not uh, feeling so good. So I might get out early and try to um, get back in and continue the general warm up again later. Would you recommend doing that? Like if I'm not feeling good in the middle of the warm up, get out, wait, maybe stretch a bit, then get back in, or should I like continue going and then? get out and then have a like more specific warm up later? I mean, that's a good, good question. Um, uh, in my opinion, general warm up is stretching on land only. It's not part of swimming. Uh, so, but if you already start a specific warm up, let's say, and then you don't feel well, you want to jump out of the pool, that should be probably a relatively short time. I would not recommend in general to do that unless you really feel bad because you should be able, I mean, you better recover longer after the warm up. And then you will you should feel better before the race if you don't feel time if you don't feel well because you have more time to, to recover after the warm up uh, if you uh, finishing warm up earlier slightly okay and you can always there are ways to maintain your body temperature always as well and uh, stretching you know and to do some other stuff even maybe stretch course a little bit if you need it uh, but uh, it, it depends on your on your condition. If you feel really bad that you have to stop, okay, you vomit vomiting or something else, you know that's a different story. 
uh, but in general, I would recommend finish warm up as you should go, okay? Maybe a little bit earlier, and then you deal with your problems that you have what, why you're not feeling well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good, good, good question, Nate. Um, when you had the example of the uh, general warm up, like for a sprinter in the distance, like the example, is that like before every race or is just that the beginning general warm up? Uh, it's a great, great question again. Uh, that should be done uh, before you can do before every race. That would I recommend. However, it's shorter before the second race. Okay. First, uh, before the first race, you're doing a little bit general longer warm up on land. S second race, a little bit shorter, than, maybe half of that only time. Because you already stretched, you already have uh, body temperature higher than, uh, than without warm up. That's why you don't need as long warm up. It should okay. go through the same stages, but everything shorter if it's second. Okay, thank you. Sense? Okay. All right. Other questions? They might not hey have guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And if you need any more presentations, Coach, Coach has a list of presentations, I believe. Uh, we're providing free presentations for teams during the quarantine. And uh, so it's, uh, you also can look at my strength training presentations online on the FINA website, it's a FINA learning platform. It's a learning.fina.org slash live. And I have four presentations over there on strength training and planning. Uh, you'll have good ideas what to do back home and how to work not only on strength, but on technique at the same time with strength exercising at home. We have great results of swimmers improving their kicking, improving their stroke technique by working on land. That's why don't waste your time. Uh, working on land, you can become much better in much better shape and swim much better technique as well by improving this uh, technique and strength at the same time. Because it's a, it's a good time now. You never have this time so much. That's why I take advantage of this time and try to make it positive changes instead of, oh, I'll wait until my pool becomes blue. Uh, you will you lose a lot of time. Other swimmers will be working hard and improving strength and technique at the same time. There are a lot of ways to make it better. And uh, if you want, we can make a you know, presentation for you guys about that as well. Great. Well, hey. thank you for your time. You're very welcome. I'll send you the copy of this presentation so you can- That would be more amazing, yeah. And I'll send it out. Again, thank, thank you guys and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome, bye.